Good to be with you again tonight. I appreciate this opportunity. I'm glad you're here tonight. And uh, I'm glad some of you uh, came back. And that's a wonderful blessing for me. Uh, maybe I didn't uh, uh, run anybody off. Hopefully, uh, uh, well, hopefully they do. Those that are not here tonight that was here this morning, hopefully they have a good reason to do that. Okay? Uh, take your Bible, turn to the book of Psalm, Division 116 tonight, please. Psalm 116. Thank you, dear uh, lady, for singing for us. I tell you, you always uh, uh, good hymns you can't beat. And I appreciate, uh, I appreciate that tonight. And uh, I, uh, I appreciate this opportunity. I know that uh, the Lord has uh, uh, great things in store for you, and uh, I, uh, I, I, pre I know uh, I was, uh, well, I was talking to some preachers a few uh, weeks ago, there's uh, within a hundred miles area of us right here, there's uh, over a hundred churches that are without a pastor, and uh, we, we, uh, uh, that's uh, that's a shame uh, that there's that many, but uh, it's like uh, uh, preachers are. And you you can find a preacher anywhere. I mean, you can go out here on the street. You can find several of them in uh, in Luray or in Stanley, or you can find preachers everywhere. But it's hard to find a good pastor. Amen. And uh, churches know that, and that's that's how churches grow. To get a good pastor, a good man that will love you, a good man that will love God. And if you do that, then everything's going to work out all right. So I'm excited to see what's happening in the future as Sunset uh, Drive. So uh, if you'll please stand with me, I want to begin reading in verse number one. Read a few verses and give to us tonight what the Lord has uh, spoken to my heart about uh, for the evening message. Psalm 116. Verse number one. I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplication, because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death can pass me, and the pains of hell get hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. Let's pray. Father, thank you again tonight for the privilege to be able to stand behind this pulpit, be able to open your Bible, be able to preach a message from it. Dear Lord, tonight I pray that you'd get glory, that you'd have your will and you'd have your way. Lord, that you'd help me to preach with your power and with your unction. Lord, you make the message plain and simple. And dear Lord, tonight you make preaching easy for me once again. Dear Lord, I pray that these are folks that are here tonight would see you through me and give you glory. We'll thank you and we'll praise you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. In this psalm, we are, uh, it's, a, it's really not a psalm of David, but it sounds like something that David would write. And uh, for sure, it is uh, uh, inspired by the Holy Ghost of God. And so, as we go through this psalm and we see this, we all have reasons why that we love somebody. And verse number one gives us really the, the title for the message tonight. It says, I love the Lord because. And David begins to, uh, well, I, I say David, and again, I, I believe he wrote it, but anyway. Uh, he, uh, he gives to us why that we ought to love the Lord. Every one of us have reasons why we love somebody. I mean, there's all kinds of, of reasons sometimes. We love somebody because of their beauty. Sometimes we love them because of their personalities. Sometimes we fall in love with them because of their money. 
and then sometimes because of their substance. All of those reasons are the reasons that I fell in love with uh, Portia, my wife. I'm still waiting on the money part. Okay? <laughs> I, uh, I want her to know that. I'm still waiting on that money. Everything else works but that money part. But we all have a reason why we love somebody. And the scripture gives to us why that we ought to love the Lord. And I, I simply want to go through those things tonight. It gives to us a, a reasons why we ought to love Him and, and, and why we ought to uh, be a people of love for even one another. And so uh, I love the Lord and because. And I'm sure tonight that each and every one of you can uh, add into that why that you love the Lord. And so we go through the scripture here and find out what the psalmist that has written this, uh, what he has to say. I love the Lord because, first of all, in verse number one and verse number two, look, look at me again, uh, what he says in verse one. I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplication, because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. I love the Lord because he hears us when we ask him uh, to save us. I'm glad that when I cried out to him and asked him to save me, I'm glad uh, that he didn't turn a deaf ear to me, but he heard me and he, he accepted me into the family and he forgave me of my sins. And I became a child of God. I'm glad that he heard me. And the scripture says that I love the Lord because that he loved me and that he cared for me and he heard what I was crying out for. The book of Romans, and I'm sure that uh, many of you tonight are, are very familiar with the scripture. Uh, Romans chapter number 10 and verse number 9. Uh, I'll give us that uh, tonight that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich and all that call upon uh, him. Uh, listen to verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm glad that it doesn't make any difference who you are. Doesn't make any difference where you came from. Doesn't make any difference uh, your color. Doesn't make any difference your wealth or your poverty. Uh, when you call upon the Lord, He's going to hear you and He's going to answer that cry. I'm glad. I love the Lord because He heard me when I cried out. And you ought to say tonight that you love the Lord because He heard you when you ask him to forgive you of your sins and to save you. And so no matter where we were, no matter what took place in our life, if you'll call upon him uh, even tonight, if you're here and you're not saved and you've never been born again, if you'll cry out and call upon him tonight, could I tell you he'll hear you crying out and he'll come and he'll answer that cry and that call and he'll uh, save you from your sin even tonight. So I love the Lord. In, in verse number 13, if you call upon him, uh, the Lord said that he hears and he'd save us. And, uh, so I love the Lord because he heard me. I love the Lord because he heard me when I cried out uh, for salvation. I love the Lord because he hears us when we need help. I don't know about you, but as we go through this life and as we're living through this life, every one of us needs some kind of help one way or the other, one day or the other, we need help. And it's a, it's a, he's, he's better than the Stanley Rescue Squad. Can I tell you that? Uh, he'll come to our rescue when we need help. I'm glad that he hears me. I love the Lord because he hears me when I need help with the problems of this life. Every one of us have some type of problem and some type of situation in our life. And we're going through some kind of problem. You may say, well, tonight I don't have a problem tonight. Well, hold on, honey. Because about tomorrow afternoon, you're probably going to be going through some problems and some troubles and some trials. And I tell you, I'm glad that when I have a problem, I can call upon him and he'll hear me and he'll take a, take voice uh, and he'll put voice within me to cry out to him and ask him for what the problem is 
in my life. Uh, our thing is we think we can handle the problems. We think we can handle the situation. We think we can take care of it. And we try to do it on our own. But all, but all the time, all we have to do is call out to Him and He'll hear us when we have a problem in our life. But we have a problem of life. Well, family problems are always a, 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 bad, a bad situation, a bad problem. And then we have, uh, people have health problems and uh, one of the, here's my problem. I have money problems. I don't know about you. I have money problems. I, every time I, I turn around, I, I'm having money problems. I, I, everybody's wanting this, and uh, food line wants this, and, and uh, everybody else wants it. Walmart wants part of it. I have problems with my money and when I go to those places. So I try to stay out of those places. I don't believe that there ought to be places where we go to. I, I think it's just like going to the tavern. I think it's a sin to go to Walmart. But anyway, <laughs> you work at Walmart, so I'm sorry. But anyway, uh, but we have problems. All of us have some kind of problems in my our life. And the Lord, I'm glad the Lord hears us when we have the problems in life. Jeremiah 33 3 says, Call unto me and I'll answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Many times we wait till we get into a bad problem and we ask the Lord, Lord, would you help me out of this? And sometimes I think he wants to say, I didn't get you in there. I'm not going to help you out. But I tell you, we ought to call upon the Lord because he'll hear us when we're having problems in our life, when we're having situations in our I, the Lord will hear us. I love the Lord because He heard me when I cried out for salvation. I love the Lord because He hears me when I have problems in my life and I need Him to help me. And then not only that, but He hears us uh, when we praise Him. Well, I tell you, I, uh, I, I, I know tonight I may say a little something that you may not uh, agree with, but I tell you, I'm going to uh, give to you the Bible. The Bible said in Psalm uh, 150, uh, let everything that hath breath Praise the Lord. I didn't see him carry anybody in here. I didn't see anybody uh, rolled in uh, on, a, on a bed as a corpse or whatever. So uh, we're all alive. We're all breathing tonight. We all, all have breath within us. And the Bible said that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. I tell you, I know that there's a lot of people, and especially, now I'm a, I'm a Baptist. I'm glad that I am a Baptist. I, I, I've always, I, I believe it. Uh, I just, well, I just am. I'm not a Baptist because my mama said. I'm not a Baptist because my dad said. I'm not a Baptist because Grandpa and Grandma did. I'm, I'm a Baptist because I studied the Word of God. I found out, boy, uh, John the Baptist, he wasn't too bad of a guy. And so uh, I, I'm a Baptist because I believe in what they preach and what they teach. Uh, they teach the Word of God. And that's why I'm uh, a Baptist tonight. It's because I don't know of anything better to be. Amen. 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 <laughs> but anyway, I know there's a lot of uh, Baptists that I can preach to, and I, I come across this scripture, and, and they'll say, well, you know, I don't believe in, I don't believe in emotions and so forth. Well, I tell you, I believe in emotions. I, I, I believed in them all of my life. Every time I turn around, there's some kind of emotion that's taking place in my life. And I believe in that. But boy, I tell you, there's a lot of places I could preach this tonight. And that is that we ought to be able to praise the Lord. Because Psalm 150 uh, tells us that we ought to praise the Lord. Uh, Psalm 145 through 150 uh, gives us uh, and talks about uh, praising the Lord. I'm glad tonight I came from an old... Uh, you can look at me, and I said this morning, you can look at me and tell I'm, I'm from old school and all that. But I came from the day and time uh, when it was uh, okay uh, for a person to raise their hand in church and a person to shout a little bit and a person can carry on and do all of that. And you said, and they were Baptists. Yeah, they were Baptists, but they uh, they didn't know you wasn't supposed to be doing that like we know in our day and time today. But anyway, uh, they, they cry out and, and they, they shout and they carry on. I'm not saying you ought to get wild and get all carried away and do all of that. I, I'm not in for all of that junk and that garbage. But when it's real, I tell you when it's real, I'm glad that somebody can stand up and shout and praise the Lord. I, I was in a, a meeting in North Carolina a few years ago and boy, I, I don't like it when 
when people try to work up and try to make a church and try to do certain things in church. I, I just don't like that, man. And hopefully that uh, you all don't either. But anyway, I was in a, I, I was in a meeting. Uh, we were packed out and uh, we had chairs set up and down the aisle. And one of the young men of the church said, uh, come by. And he said, you're going to have to move this chair out of the aisle. I said, why? And, and he said, because tonight we're going to run. I said, you're going to what? <laughs> he said, we're going to run. So they got started in the service and what? I, I tell you, the preacher started preaching and so forth. And these guys got up to run. They uh, supposedly were in the spirit and they were running. And they uh, they got on a train going around the church. And they took off out the side door and all of that. And in a few minutes, we heard them down in the parking lot. Boy, they were shouting. They was carrying on. And uh, they, they were uh, making a big commotion and all that. And they got back to the door. And the door it was like we have. It locked back behind them. They couldn't get in. I sat there and I thought, good enough for you. If you've been in the Spirit, the Spirit would open that door for you. Amen. I believe that. I don't believe in all this wild stuff. But look what the Word of God says. The Word of God says in Psalm 145 through 150, the Word of God said uh, that let everything have breath, praise the Lord. And then He says uh, uh, that we are called to praise the Lord. We are to sing psalms and we ought to sing, uh, we ought to praise the Lord. And so we, we can, the Bible teaches us in those psalms uh, that we are to praise the Lord uh, and, and in the in the house. He said we can praise the Lord in the house. I remember a day and time when uh, Grandma and Grandpa uh, would be in the house and boy, Grandma would get a little bit happy about uh, because uh, certain things were going on in their life. And she began to shout a little bit in the house. How long has it been since she shouted in the house? I tell you, I, we ought to be able to shout. The, the Bible tells us, it teaches us, that we can praise the Lord at home. Don't wait till you get to church on Sunday morning and try to praise the Lord on Sunday morning. Uh, don't wait until you get in the car and have a bus and carry on on the way to church. I tell you, we ought to praise the Lord uh, through the week in the house. We ought to praise Him on the job. We ought to praise Him wherever we are, and we ought to come into the house of God, praising the Lord, saying, boy, God's been good to me this week. I praise the Lord because of His goodness in my life. Boy, uh, the Bible tells us that we can praise the Lord uh, in our homes, and then uh, those, uh, those same psalms uh, tell us that we can praise the Lord in the field. Uh, we can we can praise Him wherever we are. Boy, that's, a, that's enough right there uh, to give the deer hunters and the, uh, the fishermen some ammunition so that they can say that boy I'm out there in the, in the boat or I'm out there in the tree step and the Bible says I can praise the Lord out here. He can. Uh, yeah, the Bible does tell us that you can do that but here's my, my point is uh, most of the time we don't unless we get about a 12 point buck or uh, we get about a 15 pound bass or something then we shout and praise the Lord and do all of that but I tell you uh, we can praise the Lord according to the word of God. Oh, we can praise the Lord out in the field, and I'm glad that we can. Then he said we can praise the Lord in the house of God. Oh, we can come into church and we can praise the Lord because he's been so good to us. And I'm glad that we can praise him in church. We ought to pray. If there's anywhere we ought to praise the Lord, it ought to be in the house of God because he has saved us. He hears us when we when we uh, when we have problems, and he hears us when we praise him. And we ought to praise him uh, when we're good and uh, when things are good. And we ought to praise him when things are bad. We ought to just praise the Lord. It makes no difference whether you've had a bad day or a bad night or whatever you had. We ought to just praise the Lord because uh, he is worthy to be praised tonight. I tell you, we ought to uh, praise the Lord. Psalm uh, 150 says, uh, praise ye the Lord. That word ye there means you. You ought to praise the Lord. You say, I was, uh, I was remembering this afternoon about uh, uh, in, in the South, and I know more, probably, I, just in case somebody's wondering, I'm, I'm an original Virginian. I was born and raised in Virginia. I just spent most of my time outside the state. I, I was from that little point between Kentucky and Tennessee, 
they wouldn't let us be part of them, so I guess Virginia had to take us. And anyway, that's where I'm from. I was I was a son of a coal miner, and I worked at the coal mine uh, beginning when I was 10 years old working in the coal mine. That's why I left there and went south. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this uh, this preacher, well, they were having a testimony time. As they were having a testimony time, this little little lady in the back, uh, she stood up and she said, uh, uh, Pastor. Uh, I'm, a, I'm about to shout. He said, well, sister, go ahead and shout. She said, uh, uh, okay. She sat back down. A few minutes, somebody else testified. She got a pastor. I'm about to shout. He said, well, sister, go ahead and let it out. Shout. And she sat back down. In a few minutes, he, uh, uh, she got back up. And she said, pastor, I, I'm about to shout. And the pastor said, well, go ahead and shout. And she said, whoopee. I don't care if you have a, a loud shout or just a little whoopee. I tell you, uh, we ought to praise the Lord and we ought to be able to shout and give God praise when we're in the house of God. If there's anywhere that we can praise God, while well, I was looking around at your facilities here, if nothing else, you ought to praise God uh, just because you have a beautiful facility and you have, uh, uh, you have a, a, a preacher that you're talking to that might come in here and God use him to bless and to reach this area for Christ. Oh, wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? That'd be a great thing to shout about. Well, I tell you, many times in our services, we see people saved, we see people born again, and nobody even makes a move. Could I tell you that's the greatest thing this side of heaven that's ever going to take place is when somebody gets born again. If there's any time we can praise the Lord, it ought to be when somebody gets saved. Somebody say amen. Amen, amen. Well, I'm glad that we can praise the Lord. I, I love the I love the Lord uh, uh, because He hears me when I praise Him. I love the Lord because uh, He has delivered me. Verse number four. Look uh, with me in verse four. Then call I upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I beseech Thee, deliver my soul. Well, I'm glad that He's delivered me from the clutches of this of Satan and. Uh, he, he'd like to destroy me. I'm glad when I was when I was dumb and out in the world, I'm glad that the Lord protected me long enough so I could realize that I was a lost person and I was on my way to a devil's hell. I'm glad that uh, 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 the Lord delivered me from the clutches of Satan. Well, even tonight, Satan would like to take each and every one of us and destroy our witness, destroy our testimony, and destroy our bodies and so forth. But God knows that He's got us in it palm of his hand and he can't destroy our, our soul and I'm glad of that tonight uh, and, but Satan I'm glad that the Lord uh, he not only heard me but he's delivered me uh, from, uh, from the clutches of Satan uh, he's delivered me from this whole world well this world has nothing for me to hold on to I'm just passing through this place well I tell you I'm, I'm glad that this is not my home I'm, I'm glad now I, I, I've learned to I've learned to love standing Virginia. I've learned to love Page County. And I, in fact, I've learned not to say anything against Page County. Okay? Uh, so anyway, but I tell you, this is not my home. As much as I love it where we live, as much as I love uh, things that are around us and the kind of people that we're around and so forth, I tell you, this world's not my home. I'm headed out of here. I'm going one day. If the rapture doesn't take place, I'm going to Bradley's funeral home take care of me and I tell you I'm going out of here one way or the other but one thing for sure is that I'm leaving this world I'm going to a better place I'm going to a better world I tell you I'm looking forward to that time I'm not getting up a bus slow tonight but I'm ready to go if the bus comes by Amen. Amen. I'm glad I tell you what I, I, you, you folks make man preach I tell you I, I love it uh, but anyway, uh, he delivered my soul from the clutches of, the, of Satan. He delivered my soul uh, from this old world. He delivered my soul from sin. And, and this old world, I tell you, uh, I'm not perfect. I still, I still mess up. I still have problems. I still have situations. 
And I'm glad that he, when I asked him to forgive me, he forgave me. Boy, he delivered me from that sin of that old life. And he, he's forgotten about that. He said, I'll remove it as far as he says from the west. Uh, he said uh, that he would uh, forgive me and take my sins and put them in the deepest part of the sea. Boy, I tell you, he delivered me from a place called hell. I'm glad that he's delivered me. I love the Lord because he delivered me from the clutches of Satan. I love the Lord because he delivered me from a place called hell. I love the Lord because he delivers me from myself. I'm my own worst enemy. Could I tell you that? Oh boy, I could destroy myself. I would tear myself up. I'd be such a wreck that nobody could put me back together again. But I tell you, God has me in the palm of his hand. And God is helping me. And he's going with me uh, wherever I go. Whatever takes place. Whatever goes on in my life. I'm glad that the Lord uh, helps me. He delivers me. And so I'm glad. I love the Lord because he delivered me from this evil world. Listen to what Psalm uh, 32 verse number 7 said. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. That word Selah means to stop and think about what has just been said. I love the Lord because He delivers me. I love the Lord tonight because He has mercy on me. Look with me in verse number 5. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. Mercy is undeserved favor from the Father. Uh, all we are as a Christian is because of the mercy of God upon our life. And I tell you, a mercy gives us hope. First Peter said, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Well, I tell you, it's a lively hope. It's a real hope. It's an abundant hope. And it's going to make a person alive when we realize that we have the mercy of God applied to our life. Ephesians chapter 2 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love, wherewith He loved us. Well, I tell you, I'm glad for the mercy of God. If it's not for the mercy of God, every one of us tonight would be in a place called hell. Every one of us would be destroyed tonight. But the mercy of God came where we were, when we were out in sin, when we were lost, when we were destroying ourselves. The mercy of God came by. And when the mercy of God came by, could I tell you, He loaded up, unloaded up, to swept us away from this old world of sin and sorrow and gave us the mercy of God upon our life. And tonight I'm glad for the mercy of God. I love the Lord because of His mercy tonight. Boy, I want you to know tonight I love the Lord. I love Him because uh, the psalmist has given me reasons why I can love the Lord. I love the Lord because of the mercies of God. I love the Lord because He has preserved me. Look with me in verse number 6. Uh, the Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. Well, that, that's me. I'm simple. I, I, I like simple things. I, I just, I, I, I like, I don't like the modern vehicles that's going on. I'm not talking about the electric cars. Lord help me. But anyway, I'm talking about, I like the old stuff. Stuff I can work on. Stuff I can, I can, you know, I, I know what's happening with it. I, man, I, I, I don't, this day and time, I don't know anything. I, I like simple stuff. I just like it to be plain. I like it to be simple. I'm not, uh, this, this wireless mic I have, that, that's complicated enough for me. Y'all <laughs> saw that already. Anyway, I, I just like simple stuff. That's me. But I love the Lord because that He took notice of me, and he took notice of my simplicity, you might say, and I love the Lord because it, the Bible says he preserved me. That means he keeps me. Well, I tell you, I couldn't keep myself anywhere. Amen. But he keeps me. And I love the Lord because he preserved me. That, that uh, he, uh, he, he, preserved, he, he preserves me. That, I don't know many of you here and I don't know how you are. I don't know. There may be some folks here that still do the canning and stuff like that. Uh, we do. 
can go to the food line and open the can up. <laughs> can. That's what we do. I mean, you know, that's... But my mother, when I was growing up, my mother used to put up preserves. And it gave me a good illustration of this, uh, thinking back how it used to be. She, she'd do the, the preserves. She'd put the, the sure gel in it and do all of that kind of stuff at the zoo and they cook and all of that. She would take a... <coughs> Uh, she would take a, a mason quart jar or a pint jar, whatever, but it had to be a mason jar. Had to be a mason. If it wasn't a mason, it was not any good. And so she'd take a mason jar, she'd get the, she'd get the, uh, the ring and, and the centerpiece of, it had to be a ball. Couldn't be a mason now, it had to be a ball. You had to have mason jar and ball uh, centerpiece and and, and ring on it, and she'd take all that, and she'd make those preserves. She'd put that, those preserves in that jar, and when she got that in that jar, she'd melt wax, paraffin wax, she'd pour that wax over that because that was gonna seal those preserves in. Boy, once those preserves were sealed in with that wax, she'd, she'd take that centerpiece, and she'd put that centerpiece on it, which would also seal and protect it. And then she'd put that ring around that, and that was sealed, that was preserved. I'm telling you, you could go back, you could go two or three years later, usually it didn't last that long, but anyway, you could go two or three years later, you could get those preserves, take it off the shelf, and guess what? Because they were preserved, they were preserved. They were still good, and that's what it is. I was thinking about how my Lord has preserved me just the same way that my mama he used to put up those preserves. Boy, I tell you, when I got saved, he preserved me. He gave me everything that I needed in order to get to heaven. Isn't that wonderful? He preserved me. And then once he uh, uh, preserved me, uh, he allowed the Holy Ghost of God. Uh, that's a, uh, uh, that, that paraffin wax is a type of the Holy Ghost of God that sealed me in. And once he sealed me in, then that centerpiece is a type of, a, uh, of the Lord Jesus that he puts his cap over the, the Holy Ghost of God. And then that ring is a type of God the Father. And I tell you, you tonight, if you could get that ring off and throw that ring away, which you can't, but if you could, uh, you could take the centerpiece and pry that centerpiece off. And you could throw that away, which was the type of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you'd get down to that paraffin wax. Uh, you'd, uh, you'd get there and you'd, you'd break that up, uh, which is the type of the Holy Spirit of God. If you could do all of that, which you can't tonight. But if you could, then you get down on the inside, you still would have preserves. That's how saved I am tonight. I'm preserved. Uh, you can take all of that away. I'm still on my way to heaven. I'm still on my way to glory. And so I love the Lord because He has preserved me. He's got me ready. He's got me uh, in a place where I need to be. And I tell you, I'm on my way to glory. He's preserved me down here. He's preserved me for one reason, and that is that I can be in glory with Him on one of these days. I was saved in 1975. I told you that this morning. And then I, I'm saved today. I'm saved forever. They can't nobody in this building get any more saved than I'm saved. And one day I'm going to go to be with Him because He has preserved me. I love the Lord because I love Him. Because the psalmist has given us the reasons why we can love the Lord. I want you to bow your heads with me. Well, stand to your feet and bow your heads. And sister, if you come to the pen and begin to play, I want to pray. After that, uh, I have an, an invitation. Father, thank you tonight for the blessed privilege to preach. Thank you for making it easy for me and these good people that have listened. Lord, I sure love you tonight. I love you more than I love anything in this world. I love you more than I love anybody in this world. Dear Lord, tonight, thank you for letting me love you the way I love you. Dear Lord, we give you the praise for what you do. In Jesus' name, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. This is the invitation. You're here tonight.